What's up guys, Nathan here. Today I wanna to teach you all about implied odds. Why are they important in poker? Why do they matter for your win rate? And why it's so important that you understand this crucial concept. So let's jump into it. Okay, so first off, what are implied odds? Well, implied odds is something that matters a lot in No Limit Hold'em. It's essentially the amount of money that you stand to win if you can make your hand. And we're gonna walk you through an example in a second here with pocket fours, as you can see in a small stakes game. Now, it's important that you guys understand the key difference between a game like No Limit Hold'em and Limit Hold'em. Limit Hold'em, which perhaps you've seen before, is a game with a completely different structure because as the name suggests, limits to the amount that you can bet on any street. And they're small, they're like one big blind, two big blinds typically. Whereas in No Limit Hold'em, you can bet your entire stack at any given point. So this means that sometimes, in some cases, it makes sense to take a hand like uh, Pocket Fours, for example, which on its own is not a specifically strong hand, but if we hit another four on the flop, turn or river, which would give us what we call a set or three of a kind, we could potentially win a massive pot against the right type of a player because once again, in No Limit Hold'em, which is what we're playing here, you can bet everything in front of you at any time. So the reason why implied odds are so important in poker, you can think of it as like investing in some sort of a, a risky stock, some sort of long shot company or crypto if you're into that something that you're paying a small amount right now and you know it's going to be a throwaway most of the time but perhaps one out of ten times something like that you stand to hit a home run knock it out of the ballpark and that's essentially what we're doing here in poker as well we're taking a very small risk in order to potentially win an enormous pot all right so let's jump into the example hand here so as i mentioned we have pocket fours in a 50 cent one dollar cash game online this is a hundred dollar buy-in we're playing six handed so it folds around to us on the cutoff with pocket fours. What should we be doing in a spot like this? Well, well, I think if it's folded to you in a cash game with this hand, whether you're playing six max or full ring, you should pretty much be coming in for a raise in almost all seats at the poker table. It's exactly what we decide to do. We make it just over a mini raise at 2.2x, which is pretty standard in today's games, especially as you're moving up to higher stakes like this, because you want to be able to mix it up with a lot more hands. So if you're using a smaller bet sizing, smaller preflop open size, this just is going to allow you to get in there profitably with a wider range of hands. So it folds around to seat number two, who decides to make what is essentially a mini raise. He pumps it up to $4. And now the big blind's gonna get out of the way and it's back on us, so what should we be doing here? Now in a spot like this, there are three important things to consider. Number one, the player type we're up against. Number two, the effective stack size specifically, which is the lowest common stack size between us. And finally, the re-raise size. So let's start with the player type. This player is what we refer to as a recreational player. Some people call it a fish. This player is playing a 24-8-2. That is VPIP, PFR, and aggression factor. By the way, if you don't know what those stats are, those are HUD stats you can get on your screen in online poker. I'll have details on all of that in the description below, but basically when I see a player with those kind of stats, that is one of those, what I call a semi-loose passive player in Crushing the Micro Stakes, for instance, my first book. This is one of these recreational players who, you know, he's in there with a fairly wide range of hands. He's splashing around, he's a losing player. He's kind of one of these fun players who just plays on the weekend. He's not a complete maniac whale fish. He's not in there playing, you know, uh, seven, five offsuit or all sorts of complete nonsense. He has some standards, but he's definitely, uh, you know, 28% of hands is still too much for six max in most cases. Now, number two, the effect of stacks. So the lowest common stack here is us. He has 300 big blinds in front of him with over $300, and we started the hand with just over $100. So the effect of stack size in this hand is going to be 100 big blinds. And lastly, his re-raise is only a mini raise. So what does all this add up to? All this adds up to a call. So the player type is extremely important because we expect to be able to get paid off from this type of player if we are to hit our hand a large majority of the time. Remember, recreational players do not like to fold hands like top pair and over pair, hands like that. And typically when they make a re-raise like this pre-flop, they don't do this very often. They usually have 
a strong hand in a situation like this, which makes our implied odds go up a lot. They have a very strong hand. Bad player who doesn't like to fold strong hands, I think you catch my drift. Number two, we have a large effect of stack size. 100 big blinds or more gives us plenty of room. It gives us plenty to win. And lastly, he only made it. He rolled out the red carpet for us, made a nice little mini raise which allows us to just mathematically get in there with, uh, you know, two napkins if we want to and see if we can hit something big on the flop. So we're going to make the call, as you see, and let's go see that flop. So boom, there it is. We nail our set. We're going to hit it one out of 8.5 times, I think it is. This is the reason why you can win big, especially in small stakes games like this, with speculative hands like small pocket pairs like this, because if you can get in there and hit your set when they have something big, you can potentially win an enormous pot. So let's see how the action plays out here. So seat number two, the recreational player comes in for a pot size bet. Now this is usually a pretty strong hand. I've talked about this in previous videos videos. So what should we be doing in a spot like this? Well, typically I think we should just be making the call here. I think that this player in this situation is representing an ace king, an ace queen, could have something like pocket kings, pocket queens, but there's a lot more combos of ace king and ace queen. And regardless, we are absolutely ahead of all of those hands. He could have hands like pocket tens and stuff as well. You know, we put him on something fairly strong and basically we're just so far ahead of all these hands. There's not really any reason to raise at this point. We'd rather just allow this player to keep bluffing. The other great thing is he's betting a full-size pot, so he's really helping us build the pot tremendously here. The other beautiful thing about this hand, I should have pointed out before, is of course we are in position. We get to act last on every single street, which is going to allow us to dictate the pace of the hand completely. We are in the driver's seat. So when they blast it full pot into you like this, when we stand to have upwards of 95% equity versus his range at this point, we should just be calling in the spot. So we'll go to the turn. Turn comes with a 10 of spades. It really doesn't change things too much. If he's got his ace king or his ace queen, you know, he's still going to be very happy with himself. And, you know, bad players don't fold pocket kings or something sometimes on boards like this too. So everything is still great. We'll see what seat two decides to do. He decides to bet around half pot this time. Now, I don't really know what that means. I mean, fish do all sorts of crazy things. Sometimes it means the absolute nuts. Sometimes it means he's got absolutely nothing at all. But uh, given his preflop play, we still think that this player probably has a pretty strong hand that he's probably not going to fold. So what should we be doing in a spot like this? Well, I think this spot is a little bit different than the flop because he did only bet half pot here i don't really want to allow like a five of diamonds or a three of diamonds for that to just roll off on the river which is probably going to kill all our action so if he had have just blasted at full pot again here bet 27 dollars I'd be fine just calling, but when he chooses to just bet half pot here, I do think we should be making a full size raise here in order to help ourselves get the stacks in on the river and also potentially charge him if he does happen to have say a king queen of diamonds or some sort of drawing hand like that. So it's exactly what we decide to do. Just make it a smallish raise there. And I think we'll definitely get our answer in this situation right here, what kind of hand we're up against. This player decides to call, so he's basically got exactly what we've been discussing the entire video. He's got some sort of strong top pair, some sort of big draw, some sort of big pocket pair, and he's not willing to let it go. So we'll go to the river. The river is the eight of clubs. It really doesn't change anything. Uh, it's a good safe card for us. We'll see what seat two decides to do. He does check to us. So what should we be doing in a spot like this? I don't really think I need to tell you guys. You already know that shipping it all in uh, with what, what do we got here? The fourth nuts or something like that is, is going to be the best play, which is exactly what we do giving him something like three to one on the pot here. And as we mentioned off the top, fish just don't fold stuff anyways. When they like their hand, when it's pretty, they're calling. I know you guys wanna see the results. So let's get right to it. Uh, he does decide to make the call, flips over pocket queens and ship the $200 pot to us. So guys, I hope this brief video helped you understand implied odds and why they're so important in no limit hold'em. A lot of people get it confused. They don't understand when they should be calling preflop with a, you know, a small pocket pair, for example, like this. And I hope you guys understand that the player type is extremely important. You do want to be calling 
versus recreational players a lot in situations like this because as you can see by the results of this hand this guy stacked off with pocket queens he didn't even have ace king here he's stacking off with a hand that can't even beat top pair here and this is why your implied odds go through the roof versus recreational players this is why i'm always harping on why you need to be playing as recreational players all the time but number two and number three, you need to make sure that there's enough stack size so that you can win something. If the guy only started the hand with $20, we can't be calling preflop in a situation like this because he just doesn't have enough for us to win. So you need to make sure that the effect of stack size is you usually want, I mean, 100 big blinds is really what you want or more. More is always better. And also the re-raise size preflop is very important. Usually the great thing about fish is they just make it nice and easy for us. They make a nice little mini raise with their pocket aces, lay out the red carpet so that we can hit our set and stack them. And something that I should have mentioned off the top, but position is also important when it's a close decision, when you're asking yourself, do I have implied odds? You should lean more towards folding if you're out of position and lean more towards calling if you're in position. The reason why, as you can see in this hand, when we have the power of position, it's going to give us so many more options in the hand to get all the money in if we want. For example, like in this hand, or to get away, or to bluff, or to do whatever we want because we get to act last, we're in the driver's seat, and that is why having the power of position is a statistically proven massive advantage in poker. So if you think it's close preflop with implied odds, if you have position, you can lean more towards calling. If you're out of position, in the blinds, for example, you can lean more towards folding. So I hope this brief analysis of implied odds was helpful for you guys. As always, I want to know what you guys think, though, so let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think implied odds are important in No Limit Hold'em? What do you look for when you have one of these speculative hands, like a small pocket pair like this? What goes into your thinking when you're deciding whether to call or re-raise as a bluff, perhaps, or just fold? Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. And as always, if you guys enjoy watching poker strategy videos like this make sure you're subscribed to the channel and also shove all in on that like button below if you found this video helpful and finally if you want to know my complete strategy for how i crush small stakes games like this make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet it's called massive profit at the micros and that'll be the top link in the description below once again it's totally free you can read it in an afternoon and finally get crushing at these low limit games all right guys i'll leave another video up here that i made last week that i think will help you guys out as well thanks a lot for watching this has been nathan williams with blackrain79.com